it's Reya and it's time for another video. Today I am going to be doing my Newts and August reading wrap up. I had a very ambitious Newts TBR which I will link down below, I posted it on Instagram and I managed to scrape one outstanding Newt and another exceeds expectations um, but other than that I didn't really manage to get a lot of reading done this month because Voltron happened. But without further ado, let's get started. So first up I'm going to be talking about my newts reading. I got an outstanding in charms and an exceeds expectations in potions. And I'm going to be taking you through those books first. For an acceptable in charms, I had to read a book with magic in it. And I read Voro Kolmen Kuninkaan Aare by Janne Kukkonen. This is a pretty hefty graphic novel. And I wasn't a huge fan of it. Um, basically, this is about a girl uh, who is a thief. And she is a very skilled thief, but the thieves guild doesn't take her seriously. And what happens is that she ends up stealing a commission and goes to uh, goes to this kind of commission uh, or by herself and basically uh, ends up escalating things and getting into a huge lot of trouble, endangering her mentor, etc. And I quite liked that there was a female main character who was very competent and actually, uh, ha actually could get things done. Um, but pretty much every single character is irredeemable, uh, is an irredeemable, despicable person. Uh, they don't learn anything from anything, and basically everything that happens in this graphic novel is pretty much moot when it comes to character development or world building or anything like that. This is a very lukewarm story, and it also um, is represented in the art. I was very lukewarm about the art because it is very muddy, very kind of monotone, black and grey, without any sort of distinguishing contrast. So I ended up giving this three stars. It wasn't like horrible. It was okay, but I wasn't too too happy with it. Not it's not it's not my favorite. For an exceeds expectations in charms, I had to read a book that charmed you. So basically a book that uh, was a cover by or had a beautiful cover. And at first I tried reading Dragon Sword and Windchild, but I DNF'd it uh, at around the 66-70 page mark. The writing style was very archaic. Uh, it felt like I was reading a sort of epic in the vein of Kalevala or Beowulf or um, War of the Roses or Romance of the Three Kingdoms. That that was the feel of it, except it wasn't very good. It felt like I was reading an epic, but in the worst possible way. Also, the main female character, the protagonist, had pretty much no agency over her situation. She was kind of just... <sighs> she was just kind of going along with the flow and and all of the female characters were super vindictive um, to each other. It was basically like reading uh, reading about mean girls in the Japanese medieval times and I wasn't here for it, so I ended up DNFing it. Um, so then I picked up Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi, which also has a beautiful cover. Um, and I picked it up from the library and continued where I left off the last time I had it in my possession. And 
I finished it and I was quite happy with it. It's another one that isn't my favorite, but I am intrigued to continue on with the series. I liked the different magical abilities that people could have. I liked the spiritual and theological aspects of magic. Uh, I also liked um, the main main point of view characters of Amari and uh, Zili. I really enjoyed their growth. Did not like Inan. He was he was clearly supposed to be a kind of Zuko esque character, uh, but he was really annoying, and I, I just felt that he was completely wishy washy and changed like his perspective on things at the drop of a hat and pff, he was just super annoying. I did not like the romance too much. Um, I have my own special little headcanon about that romance that made it a little bit more palatable but that kind of edges into spoiler territory. So if you are interested in that let me know. I might do a separate video on my spoilery thoughts on the Children of Blood and Bone because I'm kind of itching to talk about it. But I kind of liked it. Um, the antagonist was super weak. I wasn't really moved by his uh, backstory or anything. Um, I ended up giving Children of Blood and Bone three and a half stars. Uh, pretty good for a debut. I, I quite enjoyed it. Uh, pretty good for a debut. I quite enjoyed it. Then, for an outstanding in charms, I had to read a book that I thought would leave a mark. Um, and I read uh, The Wild Girls by Ursula K. Le Guin, and I enjoyed it. Well, I don't know if I could say that I enjoyed The Wild Girls. Um, it was very well written. I love Ursula K. Le Guin's writing style. I liked the themes of displacement and colonialism. Uh, they are themes that I think Le Guin handles very well and with a lot of care. Uh, but it was a really tough read because, oh my god, the men in this story and, and the culture presented in this story was horrible. So it was a really tough read, but I really liked the story. Enjoy might be a bit of a stretch, but liked it nonetheless. And I felt that it taught me something and um, gave me something on an emotional level, so that is something that I appreciate. I appreciate The Wild Girls as a story. Um, I did enjoy the essays in this a lot, um, especially the one about the, uh, the kind of pointlessness of reading and stuff like that. I, I like that essay a lot. The interview in this book um, was trash. I liked reading about Ursula K. Le Guin's answers. Uh, she seemed like a, such a haughty and a sassy personality. Uh, but the questions, my god! Those interview questions, you, you get to, uh, you got, you got to interview Ursula K. Le Guin and those were the questions? For example, there is a question, have you ever been attacked by lions? And another one, do you ever get bad reviews? Was one ever helpful? Like, what kind of questions are those? You could ask anything and... Oh, anyway, I gave this book four out of five stars. That interview probably docked that one star because... Mm. And then on to the potions. To receive an acceptable uh, on potions, I had to re read a book with a name of a color in the title, and I chose Silver Spoon by Hiromu Arakawa. This is a manga series from the same author who did uh, Full Metal Alchemist, which is one of my favorite manga series of all time. And did I enjoy this? Yes, very much so. Um, 
I am a farm girl. I was born and raised on a farm. My parents um, had um, my parents raised beef cattle for a while. Uh, I was about uh, three to four years old when we got um, rid of our beef cattle, and after that, um, I was helping out a lot on my uncle's dairy farm. So I've been around um, agriculture and farming my whole entire life, and this book is about a boy, is about Hachiken, who goes to a high school that is an agricultural high school where they teach him all about farming. And this spoke to me on so many levels. First of all, Hiromu Arakawa has done amazing research into how uh, the farming system works in Japan. There were a lot of um, unifying elements of how it works in Finland as well. And it was just so relatable. Uh, the attitudes of the characters, uh, regards to their situations were relatable. I, I just felt um, a soulful connection with this uh, series. And th this also kind of deals with uh, failing to live up to pressure. Hachiken goes to this school because he suffers from burnout, because the uh, school environment he was in, where he was in a prestigious school and trying to get into prestigious high school and cramming and trying to get into the best university, burned him out and he wasn't able to meet the expectations of his parents. And that is also very relatable to me, like... Um, trying to live up to the expectations of your peers and the expectations of yourself. And this is all about him finding ways to cope with that and finding a place in the world and trying to find out what he wants to do with his life. And I really liked it. There are there are very few things that I didn't like. Uh, for example, there is um, a general amount of kind of toilet humor. For example, there is an extended joke about the uh, chickens laying eggs from their cloaca, which is basically from their butt. And yeah, and also there is uh, one uh, plus size character who gets com who gets um, thrown under the bus for her weight all the time, like people are constantly commenting on her weight, uh, but she herself doesn't mind and is actually like uh, perfectly comfortable in her own body and she's just kind of like, well, fuck you, uh, which I enjoyed, but I just personally don't really, don't really appreciate when weight is made into such a big deal, especially when it happens to only the female character who is fat and not the male characters who are fat, you know? Uh, but yeah, I gave Silver Spoon um, three and a half stars. I'm re really looking forward to picking up the second volume and I really like it. And then to receive and exceeds expectations in Potions, you had to read a book with a male lead character. And I chose Descender Volume 5 by Jeff Lemire and... Dustin Wen. And I really liked it. I, I can't believe that this was the penultimate volume. I'm I'm shivering in my seat. I, I need to know what happens in the next one. This follows a companion robot called Team 21 who wakes up uh, 10 years after a robot uprising um, wiped out um, a major part of humanity, so to speak, and he wakes up 10 years after that and goes to look for the boy who was his uh, companion and finds himself embroiled in a new robot revolution in a world that doesn't really like robots anymore after the big robot uprising. And 
this story is just super beautiful. Uh, I love the art style. The art style has been consistently really good. Um, I will say the characters are not my all-time favorite, aside from Team 21, uh, because they don't really get fleshed out all that much. I do like um, Digger. Um, aside from Team 21, I really love Digger. Digger is one of my favorites. Um, but yeah, this is the penultimate volume, and the next one will be the last, and then I think... Uh, there will be another series called Ascender, and I'm re really looking forward to that. So I gave four stars to Descender Volume 5. Not much to say about it story-wise, because it is the fifth volume. And But yeah, I recommend it to everyone. It's so good. And then for my other August reading, first up I read this short comic called Kettu Jumala Palele by Wolf Kangare. And it was very short. It was a standalone story um, about mental health and dealing with it. Um, but I wasn't a huge fan. I thought that the metaphors with the mask uh, were kind of overused and not very fresh. Um, the art style was okay. Mm, I know this artist can do better. Um, some of the shading and the uh, line work seemed a bit sloppy to me. And also, um, this kind of gives an insight into what mental health uh, struggles can be like, but it didn't really give you any insight into this character's daily life, how they were before their mental health struggles, or how they are dealing with it. It was just kind of a look-see of, well, they are depressed, this is how it looks like. So I didn't feel connected to the story, so I ended up giving it two stars. Good effort, but not mind-blowing. Then for the Booktube Discord server book club, um, August pick was to read The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. This is about a seamstress called Frances, who ends up working for a secret patron, who is actually the Prince of Belgium. And he has a secret. He likes to dress up as a woman and go host these big parties all over town uh, as Lady Crystalia. And this is about um, finding yourself... Um, find uh, like being comfortable in your gender identity, your sexuality, your um, with your general life. This this was such a hopeful read. I I loved it. It it was like I really can't say much about it except that go read it because it was so much fun. This this was a graphic novel that had such beautiful art, and I actually didn't really like Jen Wang's Kogo Be Good, which I read prior to this, but this one was really good, very well researched. The story was simple, but beautiful, and I loved how hopeful it was, and I wish I had had this growing up, because this was very good. I gave it five stars, and I can't wait to read it again at some point. And the last thing I read in August was The Psychology of Time Travel by Kate Mascarenhas. I made a full review of this book, so I won't talk too much about it. You can check my review over here. Um, but I basically loved it. It was very good. It was a nice blend of speculative fiction and a murder mystery and thriller. And I pretty much loved it. I gave it four and a half stars. And I can't wait to reread it. And I would recommend it highly. The prose is a bit blunt. Uh, it is to the point. It is very perfunctory. It doesn't really give you uh, much in the way of descriptions. So if you are a fan of very flowery prose, this might not be your cup of tea. I personally really enjoyed the writing style and how 
bear it was uh, because I've been reading so much fantasy and so much very like descriptive re- uh, descriptive writing so it was very refreshing to read something that was anything but that for a change uh, I really enjoyed it as I said four and a half stars would highly recommend and there you have it this has been my newts and august wrap up I hope you enjoyed this video. Tell me what you have read in August and did you participate in the newts? Did you have an easier time getting all the outstandings than me? Because I had such plans and they all failed. Um, But yeah, if you like this video, consider giving the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more in the future. I will see you in the next video. Bye bye! Thank you.